Welcome back to the channel. So I want to know, are you living your vision or are you currently living somebody else's vision for you? We're going to talk about how we can align our vision and our business vision to be truly our own and not somebody else's. One thing that's been proven is the stronger your vision and the more clear you are on where you're going, the more likely you are to achieve it. If we use that as a principle, we need to have a really clear vision for not just our life, but our business and our future and everything that we want to achieve. But what I want to talk to you about today is why we actually need that vision and what it really is like what are we actually putting in that vision because a lot of people get what they put in their vision a little bit off and it can make a big difference i also want to talk to you about how we actually create a vision so how we create a vision in our minds but in our physical world as well and then the last thing i want to talk to you about today is how you make sure that your vision is your own <laughs> so how you make sure that you're not following somebody else's version of a vision for you and that somebody else could be you know expectations from your partner or your friends or family it could be expectations that you put on yourself from societal pressures around what you should be doing but we're just going to break it down and make sure that you are creating a vision that is completely for you and exactly how you want to live. So I would grab a pen and paper for this one and get ready to go. So let's start by talking about what a vision is and why we do it. So your vision should be an extremely personal indication to the life that you want to live in the future. And when I say indication, I mean it should be like a bit of a road map, a bit of a treasure map, you know, a guide as to the types of things that are important to you. Now, the reason why we vision and why we write down the things that are important to us or create vision boards of pictures of the images, depending on the type of person you are, is because we've got a really nifty system in our brain called the RAS and what this system does is it filters what comes in and out of our brains. So at any one time we are literally being bombarded by the different things that we can see here, you know, everything that's around us and our brain has an automatic filter system. And that filter system means that you see the things that you tell your brain are important. So, have you ever decided that you're gonna buy a new car and you decide that you wanna buy a Ford Cougar? You've never seen one on the road before, but you've seen it at the, the, you know, the dealership. And when you leave the dealership, you suddenly start seeing those cars everywhere everyone has one you see them everywhere you pull into the gas station there's one there you pull into the supermarket there's a couple in the supermarket car park you're driving on the motorway a couple of them drive past you like you just start seeing them everywhere and that is because you have told your brain that that particular car is something that you are interested in so it needs to find you evidence that it is a good car and if lots of people have it that makes it good so this is how our brain works now say for instance if you want to put on your vision board, you want um, an opportunity to start your own business. If you never give your brain the clear direction that that is something that's important to you, it will never look for it. It will never find you an opportunity. And this is something that so many people get wrong. When creating a, vis a vision board, they don't actually sit down and think, what do I want to start attracting into my world? now? There's two kind of schools of thoughts around how we vision. And the one is that we go big scale. This is my life impact. This is, um, you know, exactly how I want to show up in the world. This is the legacy I want to leave behind. This is the thing I want to say or the movement I want to start or, you know, the way I want to impact people's lives. And then we work back from there and say, how do I want to live my life while I do that? The other side of the spectrum is to go small. In the next 12 months, this is what I want to achieve. Yeah, in the next 12 months, this is how I want to feel. I want to get down to working three hour working days and earning X amount of money. Or I want to get, get down to working school hours around the kids. Or I want to um, hit 
you know, X number of clients or I want to add certain things into my world. So in um, the last video, I was talking about the fact that like I wanted to have monthly massages. I wanted to have a cleaner that came in. And all of those things were smaller term visions that never quite made it onto my big vision board because they didn't feel like they were like significant enough but that meant that they weren't happening for me. So it's about having a balance of the two. Now, I personally like to have a couple of different layers of vision. So I've got a kind of 12 month vision, which is more a plan, like these are the things I'm planning to do in the next 12 months. And then I'll have a kind of more open vision, like in the next three to five years, these are the things that I would love to pull into my world. And that is for my RAS to start noticing where those opportunities are and then I've got a a kind of legacy vision so what's the legacy what's the big thing that I want to do and how do I want to change the world so what am I passionate about and actually having those layers mean that you will get all of the things you want because what a lot of people do is they just create the huge vision and it feels so big and so scary that they can't see how they can make incremental steps to get there. So if you are a big vision motivated type of person, put the big vision down and then start working towards it. If the big vision really scares you, write the vision and then scale it down to in five years time, in three years time, in 12 months time. And give yourself that ability to take the incremental steps. The really important thing is that there's no right or wrong way to do visioning. You can sit and just meditate your vision in your mind and vision exactly how you want your life to be. You could journal and write out your whole vision, you know, once a week, once a month and just feel into all those good feelings. You could create a vision board and pin it behind your desk or make it your desktop or your phone screen. Like, there's no one size fits all when it comes to a vision. Some people like to just like solely focus on one vision and you know one piece of the puzzle and then move on to the next. Other people like to have a big kind of vision all going at once. You've got to ask yourself what is right for me and what is right for me right now. Because what's right for you in general and what might work for you right now might be slightly different. So I want you to think about both of those questions and then create your own vision. Now, I would love for you to write your vision now, pause the video and just write it. And whether that's in bullet points or fully written, I want you to write it all out because we're about to go on to the third piece of the puzzle here. And that is whether your vision is truly yours. And what I want you to think about as you go through this process, and I know that I've spoken to you guys about this briefly in um, the first video on the channel, but I want to just talk to you guys about this idea of is your vision truly yours? Society has a script of how we should live, the things that we should achieve. You know, we should work nine to five in a corporate job, climb the ladder, get married, have kids, go on one holiday a year, you know, it, it's all kind of planned out for us, like how we should live. Your parents will have a expectation of how you're supposed to live your life. So, you know, if they're in professional careers, they might expect that from you. If they have started their own businesses, they might expect you to work in their businesses. You know, there's always a level of expectation. Your partner, and yourself might have expectations of the life that you are supposed to live. So many people I talk to will say to me like, oh yeah, I want, you know, to work up to the point where we've got a five bedroom house and, you know, I've got a, a separate place for my business. And when I actually ask them like, what do you want to do with that space? They're like, oh, I don't know, but that's what I'm supposed to have. When I ask people how much they want to earn, a lot of people will say to me, oh, six figures. And I'll say, okay, what's the money for? How much do you actually want to pull out of your business every month? How do you want to run your business? What do you want it to look like? When you say six figures, do you mean 100,000? Do you mean 900,000? Like, that's a big difference. And a lot of people can't actually answer those questions because the vision that they're envisioning for themselves is not truly their own. If you actually sit down and ask yourself, and I always say to people, start with the life you want to live 
and then figure out how you create a business to support that life. Don't do it the other way around. So I sit down and I write out, this is the life I wanna live. This is the types of holidays I wanna go on. This is the types of things I wanna be able to do every month. The types of food I wanna eat, the experiences I wanna have. And actually that is gonna cost me X amount a year. So I need my business to make that plus the running costs plus a buffer. And I set my target based on that every year. I don't care if I hit six figures, seven figures, eight figures, nine figures, like I don't care about the physical amount of money that I have in my business. I care about the life that I live. And yes, you need money to live. Of course we do. So I work out what I need based on that. Not based on pulling some random figure out of the air that means nothing because society says that that's what a business owner should, you know, that's what a business should look like. When I'm creating my offers in my business, I don't look at other people's and think, how do I create something like that? I think, how do I want to run the Burnout to Balance program? How do I want to show up for my community? When I was sitting down thinking about creating this YouTube channel, I wasn't thinking, oh, what's everyone else creating and what content should I create? I was thinking, this is the thing I want to talk about and my tribe will find me. And that's okay. I want you to really start with asking yourself, is everything that you've written down on your vision board something that you truly want? Is it a project that you truly want to birth into the world? Is it an amount of money that you really, really want to achieve? Is it the house that you really want to live in? And if it's not, take it off your list because you will not achieve a vision that you do not want to achieve. You will self-sabotage the hell out of yourself all the way and that is hard we don't need that we're going to be talking about negative self-talk in the next video but we don't need to create any more fuel for our negative self-talk when you're thinking about your vision you're wanting to direct your mind to the thing that you're trying to achieve you want to do it in a way that is conducive for you a vision board a background on your computer journaling meditating whatever is conducive for you and you want to make sure that it is truly, truly your vision that you are trying to achieve and not somebody else's. I would love to hear one of the things that you took off your vision list because you realized it was a should from somebody else. Let me know in the comments. It would be so good to hear from you guys. And if you want more content like this, next week we're going to be talking about um, negative self-talk and how we move through that. So make sure that you like this video and you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when the next video comes out. I will see you next week.